Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, today's topic on my list is to basically tell or how to tell if your partner is cheating. There are some subtle signs that you can tell and you probably don't even like realize it or just not even you know paying attention but if you know your partner and I hope that you do as well as you do then you might already be one step ahead of the next person now after going through some you know ways in which to tell if your partner is cheating on you, we will then talk about, hey, maybe you's worked through it, and now you want, you broke up, but got back together, or you didn't break up and you decided to work at it, and we'll do makeup sex versus breakup sex, and some positions for the best makeup sex and we'll end up the show with that so let's get it started my horny little devils now i notice you get used to your partner and they just particularly dress one way or you know all the time for the most part unless if they're going to work they have to either wear you know a uniform or a suit or something. But in their off time, they're, you know, dressed basically comfortably and and all like a mom. And every so often you want them to dress up and they won't. However, this, if there is that one day, shall I say, that all of a sudden they're wearing new or different clothing, that is a sign that you know they're getting dressed up for someone they might be seeing someone else because last time you saw them get dressed in a nice little outfit was to impress you they were in t-shirts and jeans all the time and generally or their clothes that they're putting on what do they care you know they're wearing the same t-shirt every freaking day of the week and, but then all of a sudden, their dress completely changes over from the normal everyday wear to like some nice clean shirts, uh, wearing the nice new, you know, pants and things like that. Like it completely changes drastically, not just subtle, but drastically. Your partner may just be impressing someone else because if they're not impressing you who the hell are they impressing you know they may have been the shaggy dog with their hair for the longest uh time and then all of a sudden they get their hair cut why you've been telling them to do this for how long now and they haven't listened to you 
So who are they impressing? All of a sudden they're going to, you know, get up and do it. Another way, they are hiding things from you on their phone. You can remember a time when you two would be sitting there and, you know, they didn't care if you picked up their phone to answer it, to give or pick up the phone at all, shared or not shared, to, you know, tell them they got a phone call or just to tell them they're busy just in case it's the office and they are, you know, maybe tied up at the moment. But all of a sudden they, you know, don't want you looking at their phone or their tablet or their laptop. Um, they don't want you to do anything on their phone. They don't want you to touch their phone. They uh, are avoiding answering certain, you know, your phone calls or, you know, clearing out browser histories or some texts that they had on there because they don't want you to see. You know, this is a change from uh, what you're used to every day because, you know, you've been with this partner, you know their ways, you've been asking them to do things, and they're not listening to you, then all of a sudden, they just do it on their own. That's a little weird. You can't find them or reach them. You're trying to call them. Uh, they, you know, at, when you're with somebody for a long time, you know their habits. You know their schedule. So you really don't seem to... You can go by the schedule and that person is there. But that first time that you uh, try to reach out within that schedule and you know they have a... You know, they're going on a break or they're having a lunch or they're doing something... And you try and contact them and they don't all of a sudden listen or they ignore the phone call. Uh, you know, or they're not there all of a sudden in that place where, we, you know, they were supposed to be scheduled in. I mean, this is not to go and say if somebody has a very um, unroutine job or thing that, you know, they go to work every day and it's one of those jobs where it isn't routine. It's kind of sort of, you don't know what's going to happen day by day. Well, that you can get used to. However, you should not sell yourself short because they could, it is completely quiet. And then they're telling you one thing while it's something else and you find out. Way to figure it out. Another way is all of a sudden... No intimacy. That has become, you know, you could come home and get a little goofy with your partner or enjoy their time with you. Or you watch a movie together or something. And you're getting really intimate with one another. Then all of a sudden, it stops. They, you know, I mean, remember, our relationships go through that spell where it's like oh, we need something new don't ever think that doesn't happen because it does but it's the matter of fact of the matter is what you do to get through that that will be completely different so remember these are you know they're not all of a sudden there for that uh, there is that issue that will come up why is it you don't want, you know, you're pulling away from me or you're, uh, oh, you don't want to touch me or you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. There are those things that kind of telltale signs there. If they're not answering your questions with regards to that, then you have an issue that intimate, they're getting, those needs are being fulfilled elsewhere. Their friends are being weird. Now you know that Tim and John, Tim is your partner, and John and them, you know, hang out. They go bowling. Who's to say? You know, and they're really damn close and you just know each other well. Then all of a sudden, you know, that friend is getting really quiet 
you know, doesn't, all of a sudden knows nothing of about what your uh, partner is doing or they're trying to avoid answering any questions with you. That's like, uh, hello, what is going on? And then you confront your partner with them and he's being evasive as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you have an anniversary coming up or a birthday coming up, who's to say that they are not doing something for you and or are doing something for you, I mean, and this, they don't want to give you any answers because if they give you answers, then there's a problem. Well, for the most part, when this happens, they are out doing something that their friends know about or the friends even set them up with this person. And they're out there with them, and they're the ones getting the attention. They sud- are suddenly paying a lot of attention to you after being distant for a while. You know, at one point they weren't showing you any intimacy, and you question it, but they didn't answer, and you just chalked it up to a dry spell in your relationship. But then all of a sudden, I don't know where they're being overly overly uh, affectionate or paying attention to you whereas what's making them happy what's you know turning them into this all of a sudden the best partner in the world after a period of uh, it's like almost like relationship bipolar think about it your relationship is kind of sort of ick in a in a rut. Then all of a sudden that rut, with no conversation, no discussing anything, how to, you know, try to like spice up the relationship, let's, you know, move to go to a different level or whatever, or try something new to spice it up. All of a sudden, your partner is just doing it. Yeah, questionable. You want your... You get suspicious, and then you ask, but they're going to deny it. They are suddenly moody without explanation or apology. Kind of goes right into what I just said. They're like uh, on a relationship bipolar uh, mood, and their emotions are all over the place. It's almost like because they are seeing this other person, you're getting on their nerves. And they did not give you uh, any, you know, way of even coming up and saying anything, even talking to you, or even saying hush hush. It is a manipulation tactic, and it's a way that your partner makes you look like the bad guy, so that they, one, you won't find out they're cheating, and two, uh, they can blame it on you if and when they actually do get caught. That is that way of looking at it. They are not interested in the things they used to be interested in. All of a sudden, what you and them had or what you had together and, you know, shared in the relationship in interest-wise, maybe you liked going biking together or hiking together or whatever, and then all of a sudden... They don't want to do that anymore. They got now. They want to go on scooter rides or roller skating or something, or take you know long day trips or weekend trips and things. There, that is so so way of what is going. On. Instead of coming to me and saying, you know something, how about we try this? And instead, they're just doing it because they're already doing it with somebody else. Somebody's got their interest in a different direction. They are bothered by that. Things that used to drive them crazy. Like a way in which is. If they are doing... If you always went up to them and fiddled with their ears or licked their ears and things like that. And it drove them crazy, got them all in the mood and everything. And then you go up and you try it. And then all of a sudden, it's bothering them. They don't like it anymore. They don't like when you do it anymore. 
hey, that person they're cheating on you with could possibly be the person they're liking it from now. But they don't want you to do it because now it makes them think of the other person. It's not, you don't do it right anymore, so to speak. So there are ways to get uh, through that and figure out that all of a sudden, why? Ask. That's all, just ask. They're avoiding contact with you. If they have to, you know, they're always busy. If you want to get a little frisky, all of a sudden, they can't. Oh, I got this to do. Anytime that you want to get them in the mood, or you're going to come up to them and give them a hug from behind, which never bothered them before, now they're avoiding you even touching them. This one is a good one. They are paying attention to their appearance more than usual. Before their appearance did, didn't even care. They were comfortable around you. They could get into, you know, some jeans and a t-shirt and you still loved them or wanted to be with them regardless if they were cleaned up or not. But now their appearance means something to them when it didn't mean anything when it was going good with the two of you. They are getting, doing their best for that other person. I mean, one day they're saying, you know, they could care less about what they look like because they're just sitting home and relaxed. They're not going to do anything. So you're going to sit and watch TV. They just got out of work. And then all of a sudden, the next day, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to get all done up, you know, you know, clean me up and everything like that. Well, you've been stinky for close to a week now. Why all of a sudden you're paying attention to your appearance? You're not doing it for your partner. But, hey, that's how it goes. You aren't sure what they are up to on a regular basis. Not really sure they're changing uh, how they're doing. People, you know, there might be where you used to know that your partner, who they were hanging out with, or where they were going after, and they didn't care. Hey, I'm going to go get some uh, dinner with the guys after work. Okay, whatever. Now it's just like they just take off and they don't show up. You try and call them. Yet they're changing their habits. So this is where this goes. They attack you for incons... Incons... <laughs> I am having a day today. They attack you for inconsequential things. Big words. Big words, people. Big words. But we get through them. Um, it doesn't mean... Well, when it comes to this, it just means that things that don't really mean anything, they're lashing out on you. If you change the color of... Or if you go and get your hair colored like you normally do, all of a sudden it is... A problem. If you changed colored sneakers that you had or the shoes that you were wearing, you wore a comfortable little dress one day as opposed to wearing sweats and a t-shirt the next. You know, just these things that, that they just, it's, they'll just go after them. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't even mean anything to them. It's just that they're trying to, because they know they're guilty, hide it by lashing out at you for, for dumb things. It is something that gets you to the point where it's like, oh my God, what are you talking about? You never complained about this before. What is the issue? You will always ask that question, but yet they don't even answer. They're not going to give you an answer because they are busy trying to cover up their what they're doing. So, with that, 
we are going to take a break here. So get that drink, get that snack, come on back, get comfortable. And when I return, we will continue with our ways, our subtle ways, signs, ways in which you can tell your partner is cheating. And then finish out our show with some makeup sex positions and, you know, how to have the best makeup or versus breakup sex, depending on where we are after we figured out that they were cheating on us. So, or on you in general. So, I will meet you back here momentarily for more sex talk with Andra. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now let's get started or continue on with part two of some subtle signs that your partner is cheating, and then we will finish up the uh, last portion of our show with some makeup versus breakup sex and some positions that are the best for that because you know after finding out if or not your partner is cheating obviously you are going to want to get it on so let's uh, go you are feeling like you're getting the cold shoulder. Now, we all know what that feels like. And we do not like that at all. However, we know that if they don't hold your hand like they always usually do, we have an issue. If they're pulling away from you both emotionally and physically, there is somebody else they are giving that attention to. So they've probably used it all up on them and don't want to give it to you. So remember, that cold shoulder is always a dead giveaway. And uh, because they're, they're really not paying attention they are not caring really about how you feel because they are not even paying attention to you this is not a good thing because now remember if you're doing it to you and then they come back out of nowhere. All of a sudden, they are all into you. That is just a way of that other person. Just all of a sudden, the person who they were cheating on you with is probably not all that interested in them anymore. And are trying to, you know, get, you know, they left. They don't want to have a relationship with them so there goes that one and here they are trying to pull back to you but they've given you the cold shoulder for so damn long 
you're like, well, what the heck is going on? So do pay attention when your partner pulls away, not only physically, but emotionally and the like. They tell you that you're, your art that you are not going to be around for a while now this is okay if you've just been a, you know in the beginnings of a relationship you don't need to be around each other all the time you got things you gotta do they got things they gotta do and who cares however when you are in a committed relationship and it has been going strong for a very long time then all of a sudden they're just dropping little subtle hints that they're not going to be around you're not going to see them they're basically going to be uh offline as we like to put it and with today's a virtual age whether we like it or not due to covid that is just a little strange because every night you met up at say nine o'clock and then all of a sudden they are unable to meet up or they're changing things or uh just does not feel good it's not something's wrong danger will robinson danger will robinson this is what it is so remember flap your hands up in the air and scream danger will robinson danger will robinson <laughs> and those of you will know what that is in relationship and relation to significantly less or more sex in the relationship if there is less that means that they get are getting their sex needs met elsewhere or if they give you more sex in the relationship means that yes they're getting it somewhere else yes it's good but they're doing it overabundance to you so that you are satisfied so that they can, can go out and give the majority to the person that they are cheating on you with this way they feel as though they have um, fulfilled your needs sexually so that you don't ask for it for a while so that they can be with this person to do that it is it can go either way it could decrease the sex can decrease or it can increase both are trouble signs with regards to trying to figure out if you know if the hint that your partner is cheating on you so remember that don't ever think all of a sudden that because they're giving you a ton of sex that it is turned around and you are overly ecstatic about this you're bragging about it when you should actually paying be paying attention as to why there is an increase already if there is a decrease if you're constantly getting it and then it goes down opposite effect meaning they're getting their needs met elsewhere and i don't think all the masturbating in the world is going to do that so remember that masturbation is good it's not a uh substitute for the real thing so your partner is suddenly becoming more hostile to you in the relationship everything seems to blow up anything you do not good enough anything you don't do not good enough they just are below up. They don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. To them, they're like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I really like this person. Well, you really, you are. You're hurting your heart. You're not even talking with them, letting them know if there's an issue. You are, you know, this is a way, another way of your partner who is cheating is turning everything around blaming it on you it was your fault uh they're not doing anything wrong uh they're trying to get a pass that um that what is that that short fuse well they're not getting upset they're not constantly lashing out when in fact they really are so remember when they start to do that 
uh, if there are, if you happen to at one point in time get that feeling of, okay, you know, when I did it before, I was never bothered by this, but now all of a sudden they're extremely annoyed. It's one way of looking at it. To them, they are not doing anything wrong. So remember that. Unexplained expenses. All of a sudden, they don't even have enough. Uh, if you have it, the best way of checking this out is the mere fact of the matter. If you have a shared bank account, obviously, if you've been with your partner for a very long time, then all of a sudden money starts going to um, bills or things that are getting spent on out of the account at places you and them did not go to. So who did they go with? Uh, you things are going to you know money is just oozing out of your account these are ways to let you know that he or she is doing something because and it isn't with you let's put it that way in the matter but you're you're and he's they're spending it on somebody and you don't know why there are think they take money out like in larger sums and you happen to realize it and they're telling you that oh well no I had to get something fixed in the car so you know that they're regular what their regular automotive place is so call them you know, you didn't know that they put the car in the shop. Yeah, you know, they're finding ways to get around the fact that they're spending some money that is just coming out of your account. Now, other ways of looking at that, uh, all of us are, does not have money to go out or to bring you out. All of a sudden they're broke when before they didn't have a problem. Let's go, you know, let's go get something to eat. Let's go. Uh, get some ice cream. Let's go, I don't know, do something. Go to a movie. If that is still being done. <laughs> but all of a sudden, they can't go. They don't have the money to go. They, they can't afford it. And you start to, that unexplained expense. They just don't seem connected to it emotionally. We all know what that's all about. They ask, what would you do if I cheated on you? Well, all of a sudden you're going to ask the question as why. If you have to ask me that, then obviously you are cheating. Just to see what would happen? No. Why? Why do you ask me that? That's something that's out of the ordinary. Your partner comes out and says that certain behaviors don't constitute cheating. For the most part, when they come out and say that to you, usually those behaviors actually mean that they are cheating. Plain and simple. You don't even have to explain that. If you have to defend it right off the bat, then it does constitute cheating. Because for the most part, the person who is cheating in the relationship doesn't see anything wrong will blame you first and it goes downhill from there instead of coming to you and having a grown-up conversation about your relationship and if there are any issues within that relationship it may be addressing them they always want to know where you'll be because if they're bringing that person they're cheating on you with to your house, the one, the dwelling that the both of you share together, they want to make sure you're not coming home so they can do what they can, get the place cleaned, and then, you know, just make it like it never even happened. They're becoming more and more insecure. Well... I don't see, you know, if they're becoming insecure and they need like more than one person to make them build their self-confidence, 
I have issues with that one. Uh, someone who doesn't, that, I don't think that is a subtle sign. Because if you're with somebody for a while, there is no need to lose self-confidence within that relationship because you have the moral spot. You have the spot you need. However, if that's the case and they want to use it, then, well, I'd really question it. They say things like, why can't you be more adventurous or fun? When all of us, you know, here it is, you think that you were being adventurous, you were being fun. And all of a sudden, that is not enough? Well, what, why? Why is the, the word? Why? Why do you say that? Though? What do you think, you know, I'm doing the same thing every day. Or I am, you know, doing a lot. We always do this. So what, why? This is all about justification for the person who is cheating. They will find ways to get around, to make it, to justify what they're doing is right, so that they're not wrong, and if they all of a sudden just get up and say, okay, well, I've been cheating on you, it's okay, and you'll just say, well, that's fine. No, don't ever, 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 ever settle for less than what you deserve. They're suddenly being extremely affectionate and appreciative of you. Total opposite of uh, trying to avoid you. Just the opposite effect. These things come. They can either be on the decrease or they can be on the increase. In both ways, if it's in, I mean, they could be in an increase in there if they all of a sudden want to change and you know, be a better partner. That's absolutely amazing. However, it gets a little questionable when it's overly done. So remember that. You know, if you happen to keep, you did, you happen to catch them and they are actually cheating. You have some things that you can do. Don't ever sell yourself short and think that you don't. Because that's not what it's all about. You do deserve better than what you're being treated. Just basically, you know, ways to get either, if you're going to break up with this person, ways to get over these feelings is just flush yourself out, flush your feelings. Accept everything that's happening, accept that you are hurt by all of this. You really cared for this person. Apparently, they didn't think about you first and foremost. Like I said, you deserve much better in your life for yourself. Uh, don't let this whole thing rule you in the situation and your feelings. If by chance it does, do seek counseling, therapy, look up therapy groups, and so that you can like, you know, like minds usually work together. You can always talk with somebody who has gone through this and made it through and is doing very well. And they can help you to get over these feelings and show you ways in which how they've done it. However, if you happen to, the two of you sit down and discuss the fact that your partner was cheating on you and then they realize they are remorseful they realize that you are who they want well then you need to you know get together with this person talk it out and when i say flesh out if you're doing this you have to break out and you flesh out your feelings but if you decide to stay together flesh out both your feelings get air out all these issues things that were bothering you as to why you went down that road. Seek therapy if you are planning to stay together or new and uh, better ways to do things. You know, it might just not always be better, but it might just mean that it needs, you know, a, a little bit more of an open mind, a little bit more of adventurous or trying something or changing, see how things go or whatever. However, that is the end of 
of that portion of the show, it talking about those subtle signs on how to tell if your partner is cheating. So we are going to take a much needed break here. Replenish that drink, replenish that snack, come back, get relaxed. And when I return for more sex talk with Andra, we will discuss some positions, some incredible positions for makeup sex. Before that, we will discuss uh, what is makeup versus breakup sex and the best that you can have. So, oh, go on out and get that. I'll meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am still your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, in the last or the first portion of the show, we spoke about subtle ways to tell if your partner is cheating. Now we are going to turn the page a bit there and talk about makeup sex versus breakup sex. Now, come on, is there a difference? Most of us would not think so. However, makeup sex generally occurs like once you've had a massive argument or fight with your partner. And believe it or not, that little bit of an argument with your partner, some people consider is verbal foreplay. So they might just start an argument just to get those adrenaline juices running and going because it, there is that tension that builds and it builds and continues to build and then it gives way to sensual passion, which makes that sex so, so, so crazy and wild and good. Well, shall I say amazing. Breakup sex on the same line as makeup sex. However, obviously there's the word break up. The two of you have decided to break up. And then maybe after a time, you realize that you really are better with each other. So you get back together, you make up, and there you go. That breakup turns, breakup and makeup sex is amazing. And just still, it is so worth it. So that, a little bit of argument. I'm not to say that that will always happen. However, for the most part, the norm is that if you have that little bit of an argument with your partner, that little verbal foreplay, 
it gets those adrenaline juices running and you might be able, like some people, can actually, you know, lengthen that out and hold it over for a few days while they're trying to basically kiss up to you, no pun intended. And then when you finally give in that sex and all that adrenaline and that sensual pleasure and passion and everything comes surging to the forefront and is released during sex and that orgasm is out of this world. So why does it happen? Well, sharing a passionate embrace with that person you are with. Um, it might be the last thing on your mind. However, even makeup sex is the last thing on your mind that you're saying, oh, hell no, they're not getting anything tonight. But there are reasons and why it's going to happen. The first one is due to the arousal transfer. Obviously, when you've stopped fighting with your partner or having that little love spat, as we all call it, you get these feelings, all these feelings and thoughts and things are flying all over the place. And what do you do? What do you want to do? That anger has built up that adrenaline rush, which now transfers from the anger into the, oh my God, let's go jump my bones. It is, you know, arousal transfer is the psychological term. And it, the psycho, the psychological term for shifting that excitement from feeling angry to feeling horny. So it kind of swaps and you become, your emotions are running high, your sensuality is on the rise because of that, and then all of a sudden you just break into some mad sex. Another reason why that may happen, or why it happens, shall I say, because you've got that pent up aggression. And what other way to release it? You express your forgiveness and your frustration through the sex. You have all this pent up aggression that you just want to release. Why not give your little, give that penis and that vagina that lovely aggression? Have a little hard, rough, or, you know, rough and soft sex in there to release all those feelings. Another reason why this happens is biological attachment. Obviously, our bodies see things a little differently, or at least, shall I say, uh, has a different perspective than what we're seeing or whatever. Our body feels something. You have a, your body starts to have a threat of, uh, to your safety, of your sense of safety, in order to release that conflict, you will have sex. Your body says, let's make up. Because now it's kind of sort of freaking out and thinking, oh my God, we just four, are we going to break up or are we going to, you know, stay together? The way to kind of redirect those feelings, or redirect your body into feeling that attachment is activated by those fears. So the way to express it is through sex. Makeup sex, why it also happens is obviously you want closure from that little lover spat, that fight. The bigger the fight, the more adrenaline, the more that makeup sex is going to be that much amazing. It brings closure because now you know like after that big fight, you had this um not this great sex, this makeup sex, which was absolutely amazing. 
it tells you, your mind, your body, and the two of you that, okay, that fight's over. We made up. We don't got to worry too much. There are benefits to this. It actually has a benefit of emotional intimacy. This is, you know, this intimacy isn't just about the sex. It's about being able to uh, get through that that fight, or that lover spat, and having that sex. And it it's showing that your emotions have just now that em- intimacy between the emotions. It that emotional bond is building and is making you feel safer and it is accepted by that person who cares about you so that it it does have its benefits it also plays as a reset button so after you have a got all those feelings out that you've been holding on to which have been plaguing your relationship that you have not talked about hit reset Boink. reset button you don't go into staples and they have those reset buttons or those panic buttons or whatever they say on them now i'm sure there is a reset button there sex resets those um that complacency that love that relationship level it resets down your emotions and the sex brings everything down you're not so much worrying about all the stuff you were holding on to that led to that fight that led to that you know lover's quarrel it is now released it is now mended with sex that makeup sex and the two of you are feeling emotionally more intimate the bond is growing and everything else another benefit would be perspective because after you had that fight and then had that big giant massive makeup sex where the orgasm was so freaking amazing you start to ask yourself what were we fighting about in the first place you can survive it that's what makeup sex does for you it shows you that your relationship can survive that perspective all of a sudden that little argument that you would you know on those feelings that you were building up for that long length of time all of a sudden i'm like what and i held this in for this length of time why when i could have just said it got it out and got the feelings that a little fight in a relationship or love was that as some people call it a lover's quarrel is good for your relationship however if you are arguing and having disagreements constantly that is basically and you can't seem to get behind you know past that then you really do have an issue or maybe some counseling or sitting down and talking or that short break from each other maybe just what you need another benefit it gives you memories like remember when we had that spat about uh the color of shoes you wore to dinner and which were inappropriate or something so i'm not so important and remember like the sex we had after memories oh i want to have that again you'll find something to fight about (laughs) don't do that often (laughs) you become uninhibited because you were able you know that emotional intimacy building up your physical intimacy heats up as well so you joe you know where you were feeling a little afraid to try something you're willing to try it sexually then and there and you're so ready for it and you're not even thinking about it you just don't even feel it it just comes out of you you're like two wild animals in the kitchen so do use that table throw all the stuff off the table and get on there and ride your partner so they don't make it strong for no reason at all or maybe on the kitchen table you want to try something new do it another benefit is compensation so 
makeup sex is like an offering after a lover's spat or when your partner messes up you offer makeup sex i can see where that particular part would probably um backfire in some ways because if you are not addressing the issue and constantly covering it up with makeup sex then all of a sudden you are building and it is going to come out and then to have makeup sex might not even work anymore so i would not really rely on that there are some drawbacks at times because there sometimes you're you're you get to that point where that fight the sex will replace it and you're not really uh addressing what needs to be addressed the issue you're just kind of sort of covering up with sex oh if we're going to get into this let's have we'll just go straight to the sex instead it's not helping and it's not healthy it is just putting it down to the point where sex becomes problematic it doesn't replace a conversation is what i'm saying about whatever the issue is and you don't want it to because that will spoil the effects it does not cover for an apology same reason so remember that it doesn't make you forget about the fight entirely because you're not addressing the issue fully when you have it and then what if the sex isn't good well that just made whatever that issue worse than what it was and you try to cover it up with sex not a good thing to do you're having different expectations of what makeup sex means uh communication is always crucial in a relationship so always remember that it could overshadow signs of unhealthy or abusive patterns again this is the honeymoon stage after having a fight but if you're not exact you know if this is the way in which it's been covered up for so long it does kind of come out as being abusive and you don't want that uh, either there are ways to go about it after obviously consent as always is essential don't make an assumption that makeup sex is going to always happen please don't use manipula- manipulation not a very good thing to do because then uh that kind of ruins everything else make sure you set your expectations of what's um uh, i mean if you are just taking a break because you're tired of arguing all the time one partner may believe that the issue is resolved and it is not so continue that communicating the communication always check in with your partner and always respect your partner please Now there are some positions for um makeup sex which that you might want to consider that are very very helpful in making up even after a minor breakup and are always spooning is number 1 on the top of the list and that is just to tease so we are going to take a break here and it is the last break of the show before we finish up this last topic about great or some makeup sex positions that are amazing so if you want to replenish that drink or that snack please do so but do meet me back here so we can get to our topic of makeup slash a breakup sex and I will meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra. All 
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, welcome back, where we finish out our show with positions for makeup and or breakup sex. Now, I started with the first position of spooning before I ended the last segment. So let's start there and a little, little explanation, of course. Obviously, spooning is one of those great positions for all kinds of rebonding, intimacy, emotional connection, you name it. But it is very good. Whereas you're not exactly ready to, you know, look at your partner in the eye right now because you are still a little bit angry. But that little softness of the spooning and that little cuddling is just enough to keep you satisfied right now. Hey, who's to say after a little bit of spooning it goes into full-blown sex? But we'll just start there. Another lovely position is Lotus. This is where your partner is sitting cross-legged or with their legs extended, either or. Um, And then you get on top of your partner's lap by straddling it. And then you wrap your legs around your partner's waist. Uh, you can look at each other's eyes, kiss, caress, whisper, sweet, you know, just do what you want to do. There doesn't have to be any penetration, but I'm assured that there will be. Obviously, the missionary position. Uh, you are in the horizontal mambo, the most passionate one yet looking at each other. Obviously, this one I don't actually agree with, but it is one that your partner loves the most for the most part, mainly men, which is a doggy style. Uh, I think that is, you know, if you want to get a little rough and you are really heated up after that, in that sensuality and that emotional everything is so built up that you want a little bit rough well then let's go with the doggy and it does work it all depends on how you're feeling the cowgirl is another now all of these positions you have heard before but they have some versatility to them and how you are feeling at that moment in time it is basically backwards um, Lotus, if you want to put it that way, uh, you are basically just focusing on penetrating your partner or pleasuring your partner from below. So, uh, everybody gets a little bit there. Speed bump. 
Now, this one's a new one <laughs> of that list. Uh, it's a little bit more of an intense version of spooning. Uh, when you are, uh, your partner is laying on their stomach and while you are on top of them, you basically penetrate or pleasures f your partner from the rear entry. It can give you a little bit of a animalistic feeling where you're losing your inhibitions and, and things like that. Just letting down your guard because they're coming from behind. So now, like I said, there is a difference between makeup sex and breakup sex, and we will continue on with our positions. Makeup sex, like I said in the beginning, helps you to strengthen that bond and reestablish those lovely, warm and gooey feelings for your partner, or for each other, shall I say. And, and this is just after you've gone through that rough patch and know and show that you're, you're still okay in that relationship. It has a tendency to distract, but we don't want to do that. We want to actually work on the good things with regards to it. If you, now with breakup, it has some sentimental value. If it is doing, if you are, like the circumstances are right, basically. Here is, it's, it's mutual for you too. You're doing it on your terms. And whether, and, you know, if you want to continue on and continue with that, that's where that break of sex comes in. So, there is the overall difference. So, back to some makeup and or breakup positions that are very, very good and will always help. So, really, when we are thinking about it, we've had that love spat. It is okay. Maintain that open relationship with your partner, with communication and consent and all of that. So, I know I had said the cowgirl position, there is also a version that is the supercharged cowgirl when it comes to makeup sex, because your adrenaline is running, because you are going, um, you're like just trying to get that amazing feeling because it is so amped up that, and it is so high, your emotional sensuality and passion so you really ride it hard so that's really the hot aversion to the the regular little cowgirl position so you know that let's get in some other ones some other positions will be the wheelbarrow which is very good for makeup sex from behind your partner standing holding you up your bottom half up by your legs while you are hand planted on the floor and they are got you up like a wheelbarrow. It is a way of getting even more aroused. That lover spat has got you up there, but this is even bringing it more. That little bit of control, that little bit of acceptance, the inhibitions just hitting the wall and not having to worry. You can transfer this to the bed, so which is really good. Here, uh, so get a little creative when it gets to the bed, because you are still coming from behind, so your partner could be hanging off the edge of the bed while you're still supporting them bottom half by holding up their legs. The fixer is a, another position, whereas you almost in the missionary position. However, you're lifting up one leg of your partner while you are penetrating and holding them. You're like really kind of sort of, you're holding them tight so that you are rocking back and forth. And it's really self-soothing when you're doing that. Obviously, oral apology is 
one of the best. So either do it 69 or just do it to your partner. Show that appreciation for them and just let your partner go to town. But do reciprocate because remember, the both of you were in this love is quarrel together. Next is up against the wall. Your partner is leaning up against the wall. You are holding them and helping them by holding up their leg, just one leg, and penetrating them up against the wall. But you are still looking at yourself, you know, looking at each other, sorry. And it is, you're, you're basically in rhythm and you're holding this person up. They allow, they're allowing you this. And this allowance of being up against that wall and support, holding them up, holding their leg up and stuff is just a little bit of okay. Well, I'm letting you back in. And this is what is going to happen. You know, like we are having makeup sex. You can either make it rough or soft. So remember, do ask. I mean, this is really good. This position is really good. If you still have some residual annoyance, even though you've resolved the problem, it's a, a must for you to have makeup sex right then and there. Basically, uh, right after the fight, boom, up against the wall. And there you go. Another one is a throwdown. You are, your partner's sitting on the floor with their legs either crisscross or straight. It's either or. You are straddling them and at the same time you are straddling them and sitting on them. You're holding their arms up against the wall. A little bit of control there. Um, this is passionate. It is passionate. It's considered a passionate sex session. Uh, it's thrash and roll around, growl, pinch it, do whatever. It is the, it is the throwdown. You can go, this is great coming from the stand up position and right in that and you're just throwing each other around the room. Uh, another one is yab yum. Just basically, uh, reconnecting. It's a classic tantra pose, tantric, sorry, pose, called the yab yum, where your partner sits crisscross while you're on their lap with your legs wrapped around their butt. And then you can gaze into each other's eyes, synchronize your breathing, uh, little toys can be thrown in here, uh, same sex can be double vibrator. And you can go to town. You can just play around with this position. It is really a way of, I mean, these positions in makeup sex is showing that it is okay. So when there is a difference between makeup and breakup sex, obviously makeup sex is you are still together. You had a fight. You have built up. Now that fight has been relieved and your emotional status has switched over to sensual passion and you need that release. It is the adrenaline that you would build up in sex, in foreplay. It's just coming in the form of a lover's quarrel and you need to release all of that. Because when you are making up after you have a fight, you realize you feel that relief. You feel like, oh my God, that feel good, felt good to get that off of my chest. And that goes for both of you. You had that back and forth, that interaction. So now take it one step further and just go to town. You can make up a position that you would like. Who, who cares at this point in time? It is really up to you. Combine a bunch of them all together. However, if you are not ready to look into your pa your partner's eyes, at, you know, start it out slow. Start with spooning and cuddling and lightly caressing. 
maybe a light kiss to show them that, you know, it is okay to still touch me. It is okay to be here, that you are accepting of them. So it is one of the best ways to reintegrate and get back on that good uh, level of sex because you're going to have some mad passionate sex. That orgasm after making up after a lo lover's quarrel is going to be out of this world for both of you. Because just, just, your adrenaline is so high is that you just, you don't even know what to do because you're trying so hard to work it out and get it out. And so there's going to be that rough sex in there. Take that rough, initial rough sex and stop bringing it down to soft sex. Because right then and there, you might not want to say um, that you want soft sex. It might, you know, in that rare occasion where your adrenaline is, if you had a small little spat, yeah, there still will be that little bit of, let's go sit down and watch a movie, get some, you know, have a snack or whatever, order a pizza in, and then go slow right then and there. With that light caress, because it was a little bit of a spat. But if you're having that big one, uh, work it. Work those positions into trying them alternate them, do what you want, and then there you go. You are basically set because now you have a lead, you know, addressed those feelings, you've gotten them out, and you've been accepting of each other once more. So, that is the end of my show. Thank you for listening in. And I really appreciate it. And again, thank you for listening in to the GSMC Podcast, which is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. That really helps me and it helps us here at GSMC Podcast Network. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are there. And thank you and have a good night. Always remember that you need to practice safe sex, if not for your partner, for yourself. Remember to educate communicate, and always have a consent. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.